Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. Life can be miserable, life can be dark, but we're here to bring you a little bit of joy and a little bit of light. Because once again, I'm Bradley and I'm joined by His Holiness, Stu. Yeah, that'll do. Bless you. Bless you, my child. Uh, <laughs> I don't know yeah, where that's that a funny from, one. That's yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a very religious person, it has to be said. But no. It sounded like I was about to go somewhere with it, and then it's just went, ah, ah, I've got nothing. I always assume you have a plan until told otherwise. I think that's what makes us such no. a success. I, I, I've, I've never got a plan. I'm like the uh, the opposite of the A team. Yeah, there's the B team, definitely. <laughs> We are the yeah. B team. I, I love it when this. I, I love it when this just make up on the fly comes together. Yay! Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Everything's weird. I don't know what's going on. It's, 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 it's honestly it's such a weird week. I told you obviously off 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 camera, not off camera. We're not filmed. Well, you don't know that we're being filmed, <laughs> but that's 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 another time. Uh, off off mic. There we go. Pre recording. Uh, that Edith's been signed. Um, to play under eight football as a goalie, which is really good because she's only going to be an under seven next year. So she's making good progress. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's really cool. It's cost me sort of like because I've had to reward her with some goalie kit, so I've had to buy a new goalie kit ready for next season. Not nothing to do with like the team she's playing for, but I've got her the um, the England goalie kit um, for the World Cup, um, which she's got her name on. And she's got next year's Liverpool goalie kit with Faye Kirby's name on the back, who's another one of Liverpool's goalies. So nice, uh, that's good, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool when when they're into stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't mind spending out. Like I go without whatever, so they can have it. Um, same as uh, this. I'm not doing this for purely selfish reasons at all. By the way, uh, but Lucas has completed his GCSEs. I um, hope he's done well in them. I'm really proud for getting through them. Um, but I'm taking him to see Spider-Man on Saturday as a reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know. so, I've, I mean, I've already seen it. So, you know, I'm putting myself out for Oh, of really. course. And then afterwards you're going to uh, have the name Brad tattooed on him as well, aren't you? Just, just to, you know, just to do another thing purely just for him. Yeah. I mean... I- Oh God, no! That's just really weird. I don't know where you're going with that one, Stu. <laughs> Talking of weird, segue. Jesus segue Christ, what is wrong with me? Weird indeed. Video games could be weird. Um, can. I don't know which ones. It's like David Lynch films are weird, but he doesn't do video games. But there are but games based around David Lynch content. Save me, Stu. What 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 what, 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 what have we been playing? <laughs> ADHD. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of like Lynchian content, you played that one. I can't remember what it's called now, but you played one that you thought was quite good earlier this year. Um, something in the woods. Future Stew here. I looked it up. It's the Forest Cathedral. Oh, yeah. Vaguely, just yeah. That weird environmental one. Yeah, I think it might have been. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It was odd. I can't remember what it was this called either. Really it was well, really, it's... really weird. Yeah, yeah going really it was well. like it was like asset flip territory in some ways, but it was actually a competent game and really weird in others. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it was called. I'll find it anyway. I have been playing a part of the Steam Next Fest. I've been playing a demo, uh, but it's more than a demo really because it's massive, and that's a game called Greedland. Uh, which I want to keep calling Greedfall because obviously Greedfall came out not very long ago, I think. Or it's around. Anyway, I don't care. So, yeah, I've been playing that, which is a roguelite vampire survivors style game. Uh, but it's... Oh, you're, you're into those like I'm into my deck builders. I know, it's really getting there. It's definitely getting there. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's done in a kind of... Well, Starship troopers kind of thing, you know, there's just all those bugs coming at you all the time, you're on the planet, you're on the surface, and you, you're dressed in armour that looks like that guy from Vanquish, but you don't slide around on your yep. knees, like I did when I was a kid, you know, when I was uh, at school disco. But Smoking cigarettes. Yeah, no, no fags. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, ciggies for our American listeners. <laughs> yeah, um... I, don't, I really don't know where I'm going today. Oh, my head is all over the place. Uh, it's the hate. Yeah, I, it's I'm the blaming hate the game and general stupidity. But yeah, so you kind of you, you shoot stuff and you gain powers. I can't really tell you much about that more than that because it's exactly as you'd expect, you know. Um, but 
I suppose the only it had to be at Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I, it'd be great if they. It would be even better if they had the license and it was fully Starship Troopers. That would be amazing. Yeah. But just make everything Starship Troopers. That would be nice. I would like that. Yeah. Um, the Soda Six Starship Troopers. Yeah. Exactly. FIFA Starship Troopers. Everything Starship Troopers. Yeah. 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 So I would like that as well. But um, none of your political games, though. Keep politics out of my media. Yeah, you've got to keep. It. There's no. Well, luckily, <laughs> there's no politics in that in Starship Troopers. No, no, no nothing yeah. satirical whatsoever. No, please. No. Exactly. So yeah. Um, in terms of the game, the, the only kind of yeah, no, there aren't any real wrinkles <laughs> that make it kind of different, other than it's just really good at what it does, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And the demos seemingly massive. So yeah, could just get the demo if you can, because it's superb it's really good oh yeah it's like i remember so it's, it's always go back to the best demo of all time tony hawk's pro skater when that came out on the playstation that gave me the first warehouse level that's all you ever needed um, i love play. it when a demo does that fair play yeah sometimes your demo could be too good well <laughs> i don't know i i think a lot of people will buy it off the back of the demo um i mean it'll have to be sort of fairly cheap i guess because mm. You know, obviously the the demo is so fulsome, but uh, yeah, I, I reckon it will get a lot of sales, so that's good. How much is Vampire Survivors these days? Because oh, it went up. Cheeky bastard started making three ninety nine. That is now bloody cheeky. That is a bit cheeky. Um, I think that's that's your. I, I think sort of like it's set the market now. I think that's got to be the price point of pretty much any Vampire Survivors like that comes out. Yeah, uh, because you can't. You know, that's still the best. It hasn't been bettered, in my opinion, yet. There's some really good games that I will play and I'll jump in on and stuff like that, but Vampire Survivors has never been bettered. Yeah, but I I, well, I kind of agree with you in one way, but in another way, it's a bit different because this is uh, fully 3D, fully polygonal. Um, yes. So, and there's a lot of effects, so the, the, the cost pr- for production, I guess, would be higher because of that. Four pound forty nine, then. All yeah, right? fair enough. Fine. <laughs> Sounds uh, like. But yeah, you can't. It's not the sort of game I think you could go and charge twenty quid for. No, not at all. No. Um, even if it's, you know, costs that much to make, so to speak, um, and it, you feel it's worth it. Yeah, unfortunately, it's in a genre where we are talking pocket money, um, yeah. and you're not going to get away from that now. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yep. It looks good. It looks good. I've added it to the wish list. Yeah, definitely um, worth having the demo. But yeah, no, it looks it looks pretty good. I, I will purchase it down the line. Lovely. Anyway, first one I'm talking about is called Evil Wizard, which I've been playing. I'll, I'll come to why Evil Wizard in a minute. I've been playing um, some Slayer Spire, and I finally found out that the Slayer Spire downfall mod standalone downfall mod of Slay the Spire works on Steam Deck now and that's kind of like a reverse Slay the Spire where you play as one of the end bosses um, and then you go downwards through the Spire to try and take on the starting hero it's just a reverse feed loads of little new mechanic stuff like that and I love the idea of turning things around so you play as like the end boss um, and that's what Evil Wizard is the setup is you are a um, you basically play a former final boss who's been defeated. Um, and as the final boss, um, this evil wizard, you need to basically bring all your minions back, get them all back, powered up and everything. Um, rediscover sort of like all your, your powers because you've lost them all. Um, and get your castle back uh, because it's been taken by the by the heroes. Um it's uh, what I would say is very much a Hades adjacent style gameplay with maybe some Enter the Gungeon style gameplay in there, but at a slower pace. Um, and it's really good RP, like, no, sorry, really good humour, light RPG elements, stuff like that, kind of a top down thing. It's really amusing in places. It, 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 it's. It's good with the humour. It doesn't overdo the humour or anything like that. Um, so it doesn't get to a point where you're like, oh, God, this is cheesy. I'll just ignore it. Uh, but it's not overly important to play it either. So they've got a good balance that you can sort of titter along to, to the game with certain parts, ignoring it others. 
I just have what I would say. It's just a thoroughly, thoroughly good time with a just another one of those sort of games with a with its like a decent you know coat of paint on it. It's yeah, really good, really interesting and fun. I remember that fun games show. I love fun games. So do I. Well, we're very lucky that we uh, well not lucky, but I mean because we just play the the little indies most of the time. We're we're kind of. Uh, yeah, in a good in a good fun bracket for that. There's not many that are kind of unfun at that price point, at the lower price point. No, no. Or they're never at the, at the case where, um, like, I, I didn't pick this one up initially because I, I actually didn't notice there was code available, and then I did, which is why I ended up picking it up. Uh, because it's one of those where I went, oh, I'll get round to it eventually. So I'll wait till it's like a couple of quid in a sale, which I, I don't like doing, but... You know, I I don't owe developers or publishers anything. Um, they've got to make me want their games. And it was one of those where I've played it before, like in other guises and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I like the look of this, but I'm not ready to pay out decent money for it yet. So I, I did get a code. I cheated. Uh, but I'm glad I got it. Um, and I'm going to tell the rest of you to buy it instead because it's well worth the 15 quid or so that it is good number of hours of content in there. I've probably put about five, six hours in. No, I don't think I'm anywhere near the end. Uh, I'm not great at these games anyway, uh, but I'm having great fun with it. Um, looks lovely, plays lovely, decent humour, and it's got a decent soundtrack to it as well. I'm really getting into soundtracks um, since, 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 since Steam Deck has added the ability to actually listen to soundtracks on the Steam Deck in the side menu. I've been kind of getting into them. Um, and it's, yeah, it's got a lovely soundtrack. This can one. you connect them to Spotify? Can you connect like the there game is the the, the, the um, there is a um, a plugin I believe that allows you to do Spotify streaming or something. But I don't use that. I've just literally I've got about eighty soundtracks that have come with various game keys and stuff like that over the years that I've just now got access to because they're just there in the side menu. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Now I was actually thinking when playing Greedland that I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, stream in or play it, play in some stuff that I think is better or more, more appropriate yeah. to the game. Oh, you can do that. Yeah, there, there's there's a plugin for it. Can't remember what it's called though, so you need to look into it. But it's in Decky Loader, I think. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that that's available. I had it all set up on the. Um, I say my old Steam Deck on my Steam Deck before I changed the internal hard drive. And I've never got around to setting it up again. Cool. But yeah, that's really good. Um, and next up from me, um, you know me, Stu. I love a puzzle game. You do? Arcade puzzle, logic puzzles, whatever you want to call them. An arcade puzzle is a puzzle game. Semantics. Um, and I also like dying a lot. Um, hence the reason I've had at least three suicide attempts. That's, that's dark humour. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a weird way to introduce this game. Sorry, publishers and PR people. Um, <laughs> They're going to love you. Do you like puzzles and dying? Have you tried to kill yourself? Play this. No. <laughs> um, I've been playing Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine, um, yeah. which, look, yeah, just for the title alone, you can hazard a guess what it riffs off. It's um, in the Super Meat Boy franchise. It's definitely a bit of a Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine mixed with some Dr. Mario, some Puyo Puyo in there. Um, now, don't make the mistake I initially did and go into it thinking, oh, I like some Puyo Puyo and Mean Bean Machine and Dr. Mario, and this is a Meat Boy skill of that, and it'll be really good. Well, one, it is really good, but... It's not a puzzle game first. It's definitely a Meat Boy game first and foremost with a puzzle skin. Um, so, how much do you know? Do you, have you played like Puyo Puyo before? And yes. Stuff? Do you understand the mechanics? I do, yes. Yeah. Right. So, obviously, with Puyo Puyo, you do you like you try and chain like together, get combos and stuff like this. Now, in like that, sorry, but in, in Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine, you can do that. You can put together combos and etc. and you get bonuses for it. Um, and as a seasoned puzzle game player, that's what I would do. Now, what these games don't have that this does is Meat Boy style hazards in them. 
So rotating saws, um, enemies that will try and kill you with lasers, um, uh, just loads of different things that will try and kill you, chainsaw bosses, and uh, the, uh, all loads of things. Rockets are in there. Um, and they're trying to destroy your pieces as you're playing. And if you get one of your pieces hit um, as you're dropping it, then you have to start again. Um, unless you've reached the checkpoint and then you start again from the checkpoint. But if you land them, they can still get taken out, but it doesn't end your game. So you can land them and you get different things happening. So you might actually only have a well like too wide to actually play in. And you've got to basically get through every match you make on there, um, lights up a meter and it destroys a bowl, but you destroy the level and you win the level. Um, so I was playing it like a puzzle game. You can't play it like a puzzle game. It's a Meat Boy game, um, just with a puzzle skin. And when you get over that hurdle, it's it is brilliant. Um, it's so so difficult. Like I'm still very early in this game, and I can barely beat it um, in certain places. It is brutal as hell. Um, you have to kind of get out of the mindset of I've got to make chains, I've got to make combos, because if you do that, you're just not going to get through the levels because you will get destroyed. Because I'm too busy concentrating, looking for combos, not concentrating on what the hazards are, dying, starting again. And it's got that. And I'm proud of myself for literally just getting through levels. Uh, but not only do you have to get through levels, you also get, if you, like, in Meat Boys, you know you get, like, the, oh, you completed it, but now you can get the A+, plus for getting it in a certain time. Right. Right, in this, you get that. So you've got to beat it in a certain part-time. Well, I'm averaging at some of the levels, like, 1 minute 56, whatever. Part-times are, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what? what? Um, it's brutal beyond belief. Um, but I, I really, really like it. I, I I think there will be a lot of backlash, though. I think a lot of people are going to pick this up today, as of recording, based on it being Meat Boy, and based on it being based on popular, well-known puzzle mechanics, and ooh, not reacting well to it. Um, <laughs> because, yeah... Uh, because when you do hit a combo, it's great. And when you hit a combo, so you can't just ignore combos and go for single matches to get through. Because when you hit a combo, it pauses the hazards. So there's reason for doing the combos. But to set up the combos, you take time. So you're not going to hit your par time. And by trying to do your combos, you might find that a hazard will take out part of your setup. And then you've lost that combo and you panic trying to fit it. Also, it's got so many different elements going towards it. And I started off playing it. I was like, this is really, really good. And then I played a bit more and just went, nope, I'm done with this game. It's atrocious. This is just like, what have they done? This is not how you play Puyo Puyo. Then I went back to it, played it some more and played it more like a Meat Boy game where just get through. Just do what you've got to do to get through. And it's enjoyable. And I will go back sometime um, when it, I've completed it in 150 years because it's that brutal. I maybe try and get a part-time. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is watching like the uh, Games Done Quick versions of this because there will be someone who gets this and like goes, oh, I can nail this. And you'll watch someone just absolutely muller all the part-times. But yeah, this is something. All right? I'm really impressed by it. It's really good they've decided to go off on a on a kind of edgy tangent with it. And do something yeah. very different and like kind of challenging. And I don't mean like challenging in terms of the game. I mean challenging the market. You know, kind of going mm. against against the grain a little bit. Um, I don't. I'm I'm kind of torn though because I'm not a big fan of difficult games. You know, yeah. uh, I I prefer games to be a, a accessibly easy, not easy, but you know, just mm -hmm. you know mechanics wise at least yeah, yeah to be to be doable and if they're really hard for them to be short <laughs> because i i feel like you kind of you you build skill like muscle and mm. you kind of playing i don't know playing something like lunark right so very recent yes. uh, requires you to have those kind of prince of persia you know flashback style skills and you you learn them and then you kind of you build that muscle and you do it whereas Super Meat Boy is more like 
these gym bunny kind of ultra jacked steroided up people you have to you have to build a, la- a layer of muscle and dedicate yourself to it to a degree that's kind of uh, no it's i'm not going to say it's unhealthy it's unhealthy if you if you get obsessed but for most people that's not the case but you know it, it can't you have to really jack yourself up as it were um to yes. do it and I am not into those kind of games. I, I, what I think there should always be is there should be that Celeste backdoor. Um, there should be that you you have an option to just strip something out that makes it much easier than than the default difficulty. So I suppose it comes around to a question then. So do you feel that if you engage with it without trying to hit the par times and just so you can get through, is it a kind of does it work on a proper graded curve you know is it easy to get into and then you know it's it's not too brutal for a while or is it just brutal from minute one so first and foremost accessibility let me just very cover that before i forget there's an you there's an invincibility mode so cool. you don't get punished for starting again if you hit you just lose those pieces right so it's got that so, so yeah i if you get that and it's really irritating you that oh, you've done it, you made a small mistake and you've now got to start the level over again, you can turn that off. You still get punished for getting hit by losing those pieces, but it's invincible mode. So you can concentrate more on trying to beat the level than trying to beat the hazards as well. So there is that. Now, it starts off the first three levels, I would say, deceptively simple. Uh, very basic hazards. Um, get introduced at like level two, level three, and the first level is almost pure uh, uh, bean, bean machine, I would say, um, purely that. And then after you get to about maybe level four or five, the game then just goes, all right, there you go, off you go, we're going to kill you lots now. So there is a curve, but it's like you're taking a gentle stroll up a slight incline, and then you look up and Mount Everest is your next thing that you've got to tackle. Right. Now, is that good or bad? It depends on you. It really does. I like it uh, because I I I love the challenge. Um, and if I wanted just Puyo Puyo, I've got, what, 50 different versions of the official game and clones and stuff like that that I could play. Yeah. So if I wanted just Meat Boy, I've got Meat Boy. Um, so yeah, this is not going to be for everyone at all. I think there's going to be a lot of pushback on it, but it's very rewarding when you beat a level. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's something there. It's definitely. I I think it's going to get a lot of pushback from people who just don't get it. Um, it the main because yeah. it's not what people want from either. You know, there's no Venn diagram of a game that should be puzzle and Meat Boy. I mean, that's what you should get in the middle. So... What I what I think is uh, slightly on a tangent is strange, is the title. Like, the word, you know, fetus is an off-putting word. And the brand is also Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy. So it's really strange mm-hmm. that it's not Super Meat Boys Mean Meat Machine. Do you know what I mean? Or, or, or am uh, I on, on, on I, my own here? No, I think you're on your own to a degree. I get where you're coming from, but if you didn't play Sonic or you wasn't a fan of Sonic, you might not know who Dr. Robotnik is. And then you would go, you could make that same argument for Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It's a riff on that. Um, and Dr. Fetus is always has always been the main protagonist in, in Meat Boy. Um, so for people who play Meat Boy and have got into Meat Boy, it makes complete sense. But I do get where you're coming from Yeah, I, at the same time. Yeah, I get where you're coming from as well. I mean, I would say that obviously it has nowhere near the market penetration that Sonic does. But I think no. that it's still... I think you still make a good point about, about that. That the people who... You know it, we'll know it, and that will bring them to the yard. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, yeah, fair play, yep, in that case. Yeah, but no, <laughs> I, I, I'm i with you. You can almost do with, uh, I mean, it's a long enough title anyway, Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine. 
featuring Super Meat Boy as a tag off, but Super Meat Boy presents or just something like that. Point to note, by the way, um, this is done by Head Up. Um, I believe Ed McMillan has nothing to do with Super Meat Boy now. So um, it's it's up to you where you want to stand on that side of it. Um, I've got no issues with like Head Up or anything like that. And... I don't think there's anything to worry about. But, yeah, if you want it because it's Ed McMillan, it's not actually Ed McMillan's baby anymore. What? what um, it's its own What thing. was the problem with them? What was the problem with Ed McMillan? I want to say contracts, um, licensing, shady business. Not shady business shit, but just maybe naive when it comes to who, how contracts work and stuff like that in some parties. Bit of a fallout between parties and just went from there. Started initially with soundtracks. Like, I can't believe you could buy any re-releases of Super Meat Boy. Don't have the original soundtrack and they're not as good for it and all kinds of things like that. There's a lot to dive into with that. Um, but, yeah, just if, look, if, if you like Ed McMillan, you've still got Isaac. Um, and he's got Eugenics coming out one day, maybe, I hope. Right, uh, but yeah, it's no longer that, but it is still Meat Boy, um, and it's brutal, it's difficult. I like it, I hate it, all in equal measure. I've had it. Love to know what other people think when they get their hands on it. Cool. Well, yeah, I uh, I will never play it, so you'll have to wait for other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your your sort of game, is I'm, it? <laughs> no. Um, I yeah. I mean, it's a whole other topic, really. What kind of puzzle games I like, but. Um, well, the short answer is mechanically incredibly simple and also mm. comparatively easy. <laughs> I suppose that's the mm-hmm. easiest summary, but yeah. Fine. Level one of Tetris. You've, you've won. As soon as you get those four lines, that's it. I beat the yeah, game. will do for me. <laughs> it's over. I've achieved something. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I'm a winner in my mind. Uh, but talk, anyway, this is a good one to lead into accessibility, actually. I want to chat a little bit about accessibility. Yeah. Um, because this does have it, not at great levels, admittedly. You know, it's one accessibility option. But Street Fighter. Um, I'm playing Street Fighter, Stu. And I'm winning rounds in Street Fighter. Nice. Uh, because they've added, and I, I want to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to thank James Sterling, James Stephanie Sterling for this one because I didn't realise this was part of the uh, the new Street Fighter, but they've added modern controls, which takes out the need to have to remember five, God knows how many thousands of combo buttons to do a simple like few moves or to even start to be competitive. You now just have, like, you can put it to three different attack type buttons with different, uh, presses of direction, so more like Super Smash Brothers style. Um, and yeah, you lose some move sets, but you can still input classic inputs if you want. Um, so it opens it up to people like myself, people who are neurodivergent, struggle to remember these things, don't have the dexterity, or even sometimes the vision to spot it all. I can now play the game to a competent level. Um, and you know it's a good thing. Because the the long term gamers TM types who have been playing it are not very happy at modern controls, Stu. Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe you. You need to get good at the game, um, oh, and it, that, it's not the controls. Well, I've always seen whenever I've played fighting games, I've always been able to go right. I know about keeping distances. I know about defending when I should. I know about sort of like what sort of attacks I can do. But I get so bogged down on, oh, does this button combination work? Or, oh, crap, what, what do I press now? What buttons are what? And, oh, like the timers, I've got to watch what they're doing. And my ADHD brain can't keep up with all of that. Now I can because I know I can just press a button and a direction and it will do what I need it to do. And it allows me to actually play the game and not the controls. Um which is brilliant. Um, and I think stuff like that needs rewarding. Yeah. By verbally talking about it and praising it, uh, which also brings me on to, um, I'm going to follow Laura Dale, Laura K. Dale's um, lead here. Ubisoft are a horrible, 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 horrible company who deserve all the shit they get. But apparently... They done the introduction of the new Prince of Persia game, the 2D one, 
that they're doing that's not due out for a number of months and as part of their trailer showed off the accessibility options to the game so that people with accessibility needs know what whether they can start to pre-order the game they know what's in there um and apparently the uh the accessibility options are very, very, very good. And Ubisoft showing, again, leading the way. One of the companies leading the way with accessibility. Um, so, nice. you know, yeah. It needs, we'll call Ubisoft out for protecting sexual predators. But, yeah, as, as Laura says, you've got to call them out and praise them when they do the good things as well. And that's one of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like... Um... It's like, well, right. Let's pick uh, into the Spider Verse as, as my as my analogy. So you know that it has different frame rates within the game, uh, within the film, yes. um, film deliberately, yeah. stylistically. Well, it always runs in a twenty four frames per second container, like video games. So if you've got a game that has a stylized, you know, jerky motion. That is that doesn't mean that they've got oh right okay we'll run it at twenty four frames per second they run it at sixty frames per second or whatever it's just that within that within that container there's something running at twelve or twenty four or whatever mm-hmm. Ubisoft is like that so they're monsters overall as a company but there are people within it working there who do nice things and good things and mm-hmm. you're right it should actually be called out and it will be that. Ubisoft have green lit it because a it's good for their profile, you know it's good for them to put down as a uh, something that differentiates themselves in the market to make money, uh, and also you know it kind of I don't know what the term is like like greenwashing but for you know disability awareness, <laughs> um, yeah. so it's also a kind of cynical thing. So, but the thing is, it's like Disney and their like inclusiveness stuff. It's like they do it because they know that if they put it in, they've got enough clout to push it through and to make money off it yeah. and off the people. So it's coming from a bad place, but ultimately you judge people on their actions rather than their intentions because you can only judge yep. people on how things turn out. And yeah, so that's why, just going off on another tangent, that's why killing one person to save a thousand is always wrong. Because you never know what the intent, you never know what the outcome is going to be. You all you can say is you killed a person. That's all you can say. Um, anyway, yes, that's side another sidebar. But yeah, so uh, stop clock, bloody blah, greenwashing, but for disabilities, bloody blah, blah. But still, it's good that they've done it. Yes. Yeah. Also, you did mention like Disney and like when like companies like Disney when they show their support during Pride Month and stuff like that. Um, now, I I don't like major corporations using Pride. Um, and jumping on board and supporting Pride because they're doing it for purely financial reasons. Um, and that's the only reason they do it because at the end of the day, it makes money. Uh, but also, you can get a Rainbow Stitch. <laughs> yeah. And Rainbow Stitch in Pride is amazing. And I want a Rainbow Stitch. I think that they they know that... <laughs> I know I want one now and I'm not even into Lilo and Stitch. But um, <laughs> I want all their plushies because they're really good. This is why they're such a big yeah. deal because all the stuff is so good. Like, better than the films. God, that Elemental, that Pixar one looks terrible. Anyway, that's another sidebar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I think they they kind of are... Whether it's because... Whether it's deliberate or whether it's just a kind of side factor, side effect, they've ended up really having to heavily defend uh, LGBTQ plus, uh, IA plus people uh, and their support of them, supporting their support. Yeah. Because of Ron DeSantis in Florida, Florida, you know, targeting them because of their pride thing and, and Florida becoming a hell state of complete anti-trans, you know, hatred. So... Like, via the back door, they've become one of the biggest kind of rainbow alphabet defenders of all time. Yeah. Kind of weird. <laughs> I'm talking of which, though, you do it. Right, we was in Tesco the other day. Um, they had a rainbow squishamallow, so I think they've got a rainbow squishamallow. Um, and uh, we was looking at all the pride stuff. And Lo kind of, she kind of went, she went, but why do we need all this stuff? I went, what? So it, what, like, why do we need to have a month for this? And like all the flags for the month and everything like that. No, I just went, I went, what are you talking about? You are coming across as such a bloody homophobe 
And she was like, what? I mean, you're just saying, like, 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 putting, like, pride flags everywhere for the month. Like, we need to, like, it's got to be done. Like, you're saying you don't want to... Oh, God, no, I don't mean like that. I mean, we shouldn't be having to do it. We shouldn't be having to do it. Because, like, it should just be normal. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I just wanted to make you sound like a massive homophobe in front of all the old people that were stood there. Because you could you could sense a couple of them kind of nodding along, going, yeah, no, I agree. Why do we need this stuff? Oh, blimey. <laughs> and she was like, no. Oh. No, I didn't mean it like that. I went, yeah, no, I... Listen, in a perfect world... We wouldn't need Black History Month. We wouldn't need Pride Month. But unfortunately, until we get that perfect world, we still need it. Um, yes. And yeah. Um, I think it's one yeah, of those things. A, yeah, I know we're, we're really going off, to, off topic. <laughs> but that's one of those things where if Pride hadn't have become such a big thing, um, yeah, Pride Month and, and Pride celebrations over the last sort of decade or so, the, the, prob- the anti trans rhetoric would be taking a foothold so much more quickly and strongly and it's bad enough as it is it's absolutely terrible yeah and they're trying to bring in this new law well it's not a law but they're trying to bring in these new rules about teaching about trans people in, in schools which is disgusting um then mm. the way you know silencing people and, and trying to make them disappear and it's like if it hadn't been for that build like again going back to that muscle analogy if that muscle hadn't been built up of pride existing and people not being able to publicly criticise Pride, which is great, um, even if they, you know, personally are homophobic or, you know, anti, anti rainbow, um, they can't do it in public. That has helped, I, I feel, with the anti-trans thing. Although, not enough, but it's there. It's helped a little. So there's there is pushback, which is the only thing that's stopping me like burning down the whole of society at the moment. Really, I mean, still go for it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but we've got some uh, pride tattoos and some pride face paint for this football tournament. Nice this this coming weekend. Awesome. Um, so I've offered to help, but I want to see if they'll let me help when I've got rainbow face and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Ah, cool. Um, um, going back but, to yeah. going back to Street Fighter Six, I think that's amazing. I think that's so cool. Yes. I really do because, like, when I used to play with my friends, so we're talking, you know over 20 years ago now 25 27 probably 30 years let's just say 30 years ago <laughs> yeah, 30 yeah, years yeah. ago or like when we were playing Street Fighter Alpha 3 was like the pinnacle for us and th- yeah. it was like we all used pads like none of us used joysticks and everyone had like massive calluses on the fingers from playing it so much and it was an obsession you know and like it, everyone absolutely loved playing but there were moves that I could do that the other my other friends couldn't do or at least couldn't do reliably and their strategies were really good but their execution wasn't always quite there um, and it wasn't it was not logical to them at all like they'd, they'd do things like switch the hard punch and, and hard kick to the face buttons rather than the the shoulder buttons on the pad so that it they'd be more yeah. accessible for them because and I was like well I'm just going to build up the muscle memory to to use those otherwise you know it's going to be awkward so I kind of I, I think it's just yeah the way my brain works I had no problem adapting to to the way the, the game forced me to and I, I tend not to have that problem but I totally see how people do and like I could do like yeah. alpha counters really easily well particularly on Alpha 2 um, and my, my friends couldn't and they just saw it as, as cheating that I could do like a move that's in the game because they couldn't physically couldn't do it Yeah. so yeah it's, it's but, it can't be anything but brilliant to allow people to do it no yeah. and I look at games like I think the most accessible fighting game outside of Smash Brothers has always been Mortal Kombat. Yeah, for yeah, me. definitely. Um, I've always found that's the one that I can play offline at least and get through the story mode on like easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas I've tried doing that with like Blaz Blue and um, Guilty Gear and stuff like that, and they still kick my ass oh, after the tutorial. So hard, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I could see how good they are. You know, is it Guilty Gear that looks like a living cartoon? Yes, oh, yeah. It just looks amazing. I can watch that one. Yeah. Um, but I've never in my life pulled off a fatality until they offered the easy fatalities. Yeah. Uh, because I just couldn't remember the combos, especially like I'd look it up beforehand 
Um, like when I had it on like the, the Mega Drive, I think I had Mortal Kombat initially. I'd look it up beforehand and go, right, this is the input to do Johnny Cage's fatality or one of his fatalities. I'm going to do that one at the end. Fight, 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 fight. Finally win. Right, you've now got a short window to enter that fatality. My brain's going, oh, uh, oh, what, 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 uh, oh, crap, I've missed it. Yeah. Um, and I tried, oh, right, right. I'm going to do this. I will pause it and then check the fatality combo, unpause it and enter the combo. But unpause. Oh, I've missed the window because yeah. you couldn't do it. So I, I've never pulled off a fatality until it became a one or two button press to do it. Um, so again, if you want to be, I can do the great fatalities by pressing the button combos in Mortal Kombat. You do you. You do you. Uh, but let me be me. Um, it's the same with Street Fighter. Um, I don't know where I stand on the, the lobby, so you can fight anyone from any um, any control scheme in the lobby, like in the uh, ranked and everything. There's no sort of like, oh, uh, modern controls only and classic controls only. I like the idea that it's kind of like, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I, I do get that because on oh, modern controls, you are restricted a little bit in terms of your move sets that you could actually do um so you're never going to have the full move set unless you do start to learn some of the more advanced inputs and that's fine but you can choose what inputs go on where and stuff like that um which is really really good um the online i think they may adjust that a bit down the line but praise be where praise be yeah, definitely. Yeah, and there's a big responsibility with, uh, w- w- mainly with Capcom because they popularise the genre where th- they sh- they have to make it accessible. And I'm not talking about you know, uh, well, it, it it's, it's kind of intersectional. There's like there's dis- there's disabilities that stop people being able to, but there's also just general way that people learn. Like it, it changes from person to person, and th- the way that they instructed people has always been poor like you've yeah. seen kind of like and like the the community kind of take it and run with it and they kind of refer to like inputs as like numbers like on a mm. on a dial so that you can work it out that way and it's like my brain just doesn't work that way like motions are the way that I would learn so like swooping motions so like I would always refer and a lot of people do to like drag and punch for a for a certain and then it like I see that movement in my head that the joystick has to make you know I don't think of it in terms of oh it's you know forward down right you know I don't think of it in those terms at all and even in the tutorials in a lot of the later games they were very much like you know just showing you but the the places (laughs) to actually hit on the stick and it's just like there's better ways of doing this and you're not picking them yeah so yeah i think there was a guilty gear one that i just couldn't get past the tutorial because it asked me to do some kind of combo rising attack thing and my brain just couldn't compute what i had to do yeah. at all and i'm like i don't like it yeah yeah well that's it it can become hateful if you can't yeah. can't do it because you know that you physically can but the way that they're, you're being told means you physically can't that's bad training that's bad teaching yeah um and what i would like to see fighting games do is give you the option of customizing it so sort of go look are you the sort of person that's going to struggle with entering these combos fine choose which of these combos you would like to put onto a single button press not even a single button press but a a direction plus a button yeah. or a direction plus two buttons yeah. so you've got it that easy um and they go right but we're only gonna have space so you can choose whatever ones you want to put in there which suit your fighting style but there's always going to be four out of their move set that you cannot fit in at the same time you can substitute them but you can't fit them all in so the people who've got the classic controls have what they've got, and they've got the full move set. But we give you an incentive to try and use those and learn them. But if you can't, you're not overly punished. Something like that that could allow people because I want to learn, 
And if you can teach me that, right, I can have most of the movesets on these simple button combos, but I could do four extra ones by learning these four longer combos. I'm more likely to want to try and learn them. And when I keep just learning those four, I might go, all right, okay, let's then change this combo, this simple combo, and I'll try and learn that. And I'll learn it bit by bit as I get used to the character. And I'm learning when to use them and how to use them. So you could start to hybrid these things and allow people to customise what's modern, what's classic, and get their own play style. Uh, because you don't tell someone. I, I've seen the fighting competitions that they do. Uh, I can't remember what the actual tournaments are called now. Evo. And you see different people. Evo, yeah. yeah. And you see different people with like how they hold their joysticks, everything like that. You don't turn around to the Evo champions and turn around and go, well, yeah, but that don't count because you wasn't quite holding that stick in the right way like this guy was. Yeah. You don't do that. And it's the same with modern controls and classic controls. You're giving people the tools to be able to play and level that playing field so it's about the skill. And that's that that's what you need. Because um, it's like you wouldn't put Mike Tyson in a fight with Prince Nassim Hamid. I'm showing my age now and how modern I am with boxing <laughs> there, by the way. Uh, because you just wouldn't get a fair fight with it. I don't know who would win because I don't know whether the speed would just knack out Mike Tyson or whether Mike Tyson just hits him with one and he's down. I don't know. But you don't get a balanced fight. And that's all people are asking for. Whereas if you could say, right, look, these two can fight each other, but what we're going to do is we're going to give Prince Nassim Hamid the tools to be able to fight on a level playing field with Mike Tyson somehow. That makes it a fair fight. And that's all these controls are doing. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, I'm all for it. More games need accessibility options. The more we praise them, the more the big companies are doing them. The tools then get better, which means the smaller indies can start to use them um, because they haven't got to think about them because there'll be a middleware for it. And all of a sudden, everyone can play games and the world's a happier place. Absolutely. And for the for the gaps are where it's, you know, the, you need training so when you need to be taught how to do something complex they should all, all games should have or fighting games should have uh, little videos of people performing that motion on the on the, on yeah. a stick and uh, you can either do it as animation like you know a cute little animation or just do it as actual video um but just and name it give it an abstract name and then where the person can learn it visually and then have an uh, an abstract title so yeah just call it like you know uh, i don't know Firewind, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Call, call a fire, yeah, call a fireball, firewind. Something, yeah, that's not going to get you into legal trouble. And then show people the motion, and then people will associate that name with that motion. And then you can go, oh, I've picked this new character, um, but I don't know any of their moves. And you just go, oh, it's, it's just do firewind. His best one's firewind. Her best one's firewind. And then yeah. it's like, right, oh, right, well, how'd you do it? Well, I'll have a look at this video. And like, they all they do is just like pause the game, immediately see a GIF of somebody performing it on a pad and on a on a stick. And there you go, job done. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you with that. And the other things as well, it's like the um, the combos they show you um, in terms of when where you've got to have your stick positioned and the movement you've got to do with it. For example, it took me years to understand that was a singular motion. Yes. So if you know you're like you've got to do a quarter circle, it took me eight. Like, they never said it was a quarter circle. I just assumed I had to press down, down, right, right. Yeah. It like snap, snap, snap. Not an actual quarter circle. Tell me it's a quarter circle starting at six o'clock. Yeah, or something. You know that that helps. You know, uh, you know, or right. Again, you you like use specific names. So if you want to call it a quarter, like a quarter circle on that thing. Give that a specific move set name. It's like when you do like you're playing football and you do a like a, a turn, like you use the inside of your foot to drag the ball back behind you and then turn. It's called a Cruyff turn. Yep. Now you're trying to explain to someone, oh, you do a drag back, blah blah blah, and you just uh, that's all you're trying to describe it. But you, you most people once they get into football, you go, right. The Cruyff turn. You go, oh, I know what the Cruyff turn is. Yeah. Or you explain what the Cruyff turn is. Yeah. Or a Paneka, which is where you do a little dinked penalty shot. People know what a Paneka is once they've done it. 
And again, you teach them, and they can Google a Paneka, they can Google a Cruyff turn, they can Google step overs and things like that. And you're right, give it a name. So give that quarter circle, that half circle from north to south, going counterclockwise, you're right, give them a specific name. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you. It's evolving, and this is a great, great first step. Um, Street Fighter 6 is the best Street Fighter since Street Fighter 2 because there's the last one I played prop. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I'm really, I'm really glad about that. I will give it a go at some point, but I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about it that's very off-putting to me. The way it looks, I just very colourful. Eh, it's not the colours. It's just the oh. the squishy visual style. It just really puts me off. But anyway, that's my personal thing. But I will play yes. it at some point when it's cheap. When they bring out Street Fight Super Street Fighter Six Turbo Edition or whatever they generally do, exactly. With them. They're still doing that caper. Uh, now they just like charge like individual DLCs and they're called DLCs and then they wrap some of that up but not all of it into a bundle and then they do another bundle that's got some of it but not others and then you still have to buy the DLC. That's their new version of charging you again and again. And it's got a battle pass. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, so, oh, although we've complimented yeah. Capcom, we're giving with one hand yeah. and taking away with the other. Yeah, and I had some credit left over, so I thought, fuck it, I'll have a little try and see what all this battle pass is about. Because it, it's also got in there, and I've, I've, I really love game, more games do this, please. You can play some classic Capcom, Capcom, Capcom games in the uh, the battle hub, the online hub world. Um, so you can play Final Fight, um, Street Fighter 2, a game called Wings or something like that, and the various other ones. You can get different ROMs that you can put that it loads in, and you can play those on arcade cabinets. Um, and you'll like this, Stu. This might sell you the game <laughs> over the fight in itself. Oh. So, Final Fight, you can just play it, free play it, or it gives you a one credit run where you submit a high score at the end. Oh, very nice. Um, so, if that's what you want, if you want to do one credit runs at Final Fight, then get Street Fighter 6 for 50 quid. <laughs> uh, but I, it's, listen, I love touches like that. I, I, that's fan service. That That's treating your, your long-time fans with a bit of respect. Um, and it also brings some lore into place because it mentions in the store, like the World, the world Tour mode, it mentions Mayor Mike, 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 the, Mayor Mike Hager. Or Hager? 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 Hager. 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 Uh, mentions, mentions him. Um, and again, if you're a newcomer, you might not have a fucking clue who that is. But you go into the thing, you play Final Fire, and then he's on the screen, and he's a selectable character. Anyone who doesn't know who he is can go, oh, okay, he's from that game. So, yeah, good. More stuff like that, please. I like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, less, less battle passes, though. Come on. Um, I get why they're doing it. Everyone's doing it. Um, so I can't blame them. But, yeah, just let's, let's stop the battle pass. Absolutely. Disgusting practice, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, and talking of stopping battle passes, I think it's time we stop the uh, the mental health gaming battle pass. And forget it for level 100. I'll shut up now. Yeah, if people want to um, pay for us to, to do specific things, then yeah, feel free, chuck us a load of cash and we'll do whatever, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, I'll suck anything. Not me, what? Yeah, yeah what? I know you will. Um <laughs> <laughs> you just need to be pointed at something and you go, yep, I'm on it. I didn't realise I could do it for money. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> for fun, fun and profit, yeah. But uh, yes, so before we go any further down that route, that's it for this week. So hopefully have a good week. In the meantime, before the next time, make sure you check out all of our content on the website, follow us on all the socials, join our Discord if you want to chat. And other than that, stay safe and stay safe. Stay safe.